So if we want to know what are our sales for the month, what we need to do is we need to add the sales, the sale amounts which are reflected on this column. So given that we are about to add, I will do my, draw my single line there and I will add all these numbers or totals. If you add all of these, you would get a total of eight, 881. This amount right here represents the total sales on credit for the month of March. So that means that this amount right here, which I will double underline, is the amount that these people, which are accounts receivable because they owe me, need to pay at some sometime in the near future. So these are my accounts receivable. That's the reason why I wrote, that's one of the main reasons why I wrote their names here because I want to know who owes me these specific amounts. I know this is the total, but I want to know who owes me this, this, and, and that's why the, there's a specific description for all of these sales. So it's very important that you write the name of the people or companies that owe you here. So these are your accounts receivable. If I were to just write here sales and then sales for every single description, then I would not know to whom would I need to, to look for to, if I want this amount to be paid, for example. If I only write here sales, then that I, I would need to go back to my source document, figure out the invoice number, and that's too much work. So it's better if you write the name of the accounts receivable and then it's easier to um, track down in your paperwork. Now, the next step is to use our folio with a combination of our T accounts. So we've journalized the transactions. Now what we need to do is take these transactions and take it to our to our to our ledgers or T accounts. We've done the day book. Well, we've only done the sales day book. We will do the purchases day book, the return inwards and so on. We have other day books that we will do, but I focus today on the sales day book. So what we will do is we will take these transactions and we will post them to our respective ledgers or T accounts. So you will need a number of T accounts and you will notice that the T accounts that I have here have a new column that you guys have not used before in this class and that is the folio column which you also have in the sales day book so this is a new column effective today when you draw your t accounts you need to include this new column on your t accounts i only labeled the first t account because um, you don't need to keep doing that only for the first few perhaps to memorize the, the name of each column but after that you can do what I have here once you have the correct number of, of columns in your T accounts. So I also went ahead and I opened a T account for all of these which you would notice that are the same names that I have here which are my sales ledgers. All of these are sales ledgers which we also know as accounts receivable. So this is very important for you to, to, to keep in mind. In fact, I, I want you to, to do the following for me from this point on. There are three types of ledgers, three types of ledgers. So any T account that I give you must fall under one of the following three types. The first one is that all your accounts receivable will be referred to as sales ledgers and we will abbreviate them as SL. Keep that in mind, especially for this video. Your accounts receivable are sales ledgers, which we abbreviate as SL. For the next chapter, we will do accounts payable, which we will be calling our purchases ledger, and we will abbreviate as PL, but this is for the following chapter. You must remember 
pointer one and then three as well. All other accounts or T accounts are referred as general ledgers or abbreviated as GL. So, as I said, the list that you see here, they're all accounts receivable, at least the first 70 accounts are all accounts receivable, which we will be referring to as sales ledgers. I will go to the GL in a bit.